So I got some of this, you know, you know, half hand. You know, well, what do you mean by that? What's the Church of Christ? You know, that's that's where I put has the name Church of Christ become a denomination. Then you have to say, well, where in in the world or in the Bible? <laughs> Because that's how we're going to have to make this distinction, and I hope you got that very clearly in the world or in the Bible, because we have worldly terms that are pushing us into various ways, and there is also language that we use that is important. But there's also the necessity of remaining sound to the word and not going beyond that which is written nor creating something that has never been there in the book. And this is... Uh, unique thing. So the term, the church, the called out, we are those that have been called out of darkness and into his marvelous light. We've heard these lessons, we've, we've thought about them, we've talked about them, we teach others them, that the church, and when we define the term, the church is the called out. We've been called out of a lifestyle that was contrary to God's will, and now we're in harmony with God's will. Jesus said, I'll build my church, we affirm it. I believe all of those that profess faith in Jesus Christ would say the same thing. Upon this rock I will build my church. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the true and living God. That confession would bring the foundation upon which the church would be built. And so it is. It's singular and it is possessive. Don't y'all love these sermons when you go, ah, yeah, boy, I could preach these. I've heard them so many times if we're in the church. It's singular, possessive. We got all the verbiage down. And yes, we do. The biblical truth about Christ's church and universally there's this grand beauty of the Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, the innumerable company of angels, the general assembly, the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. Man, that is a big, beautiful group of glorious, redeemed individuals and beings the universal. Then we got the local. And how that happened is pretty familiar to us all because we had in Acts chapter 2 the establishment of church. Actually, you know, your invitation there, the local assembly. You can study a little bit about how hard this was in the first century through the book of Acts on the local assembly. There was assembly. We're going to see things in that reading, but we're also going to see the church moving, growing, doing and when Paul says emulate me or imitate me as I am an imitator of Christ then what we're talking about is what happened then we had you know one church established local then they went to another city what did they do establish another church the Isle of Crete the Isle of a hundred cities he's supposed to go to all those churches all these local groups on this little island and establish order to the assembly to the, to the restructure of the local group. So you go through the process, and then we have that famous passage in Romans, the 16th chapter and the 16th verse, that churches of Christ salute you. And so there we have the name given to the local assembly, and that is what has to be on the building for it to be recognized. No, none of us believe that. But have we culturalized our Western civilization in such a way that that's the essential? When I go to China, I don't have a sign. All I can find is people. Remember that? Where are you? <laughs> Had to get one person to tell me about another person who was over there who got me in touch with another person. Don't sing too loud. <laughs> it's, you know? It's different. We don't need to get our minds so wrapped up. It's not the name of the church. It's not the name of the church. Please. And I know that there's some newly converted and, and individuals, and, and you struggle sometimes with this. It's not the name of the church. We have the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. Galatians 1, there's another phrase in the Bible about local assemblies. And it's just Little Rock churches. Yeah. However, 
that label, Church of Christ. So six years ago when this began, I had one preacher tell me that this local group was a rival congregation. When it began, a rival congregation. And then I had the elders from across the street to raise some questions with their preacher that was there then about, wait a minute, we got a church across the street coming up. Why don't they come over here? And the preacher said, well, if you had the preacher sit down with you, you'd find out real quick that he would come over here if y'all would make a handful of changes with the way you spent your money and some of the practices you engaged in. And so, but I had, you know, we, we all got together, we got the building, and what was the first thing we needed to do? Get the identity up there. And if we move, we got the same question again, you know. I was trying to be as universal as possible in our appeal because of Little Rock. We're in Little Rock, so I didn't know where we was going to be. I guess we could have called it Guillermo's Church Christ when we were in a coffee shop. We'll see about that in a minute. But I just want you to put in your mind for a minute, you're 80, your family's gone, you're in a nursing facility, you don't really have any access and transportation facilities, whatever. Life just, at the end, it, it, you, don't, you don't have the control. It just happens how you find yourself. <clears throat> so you're in there, and then some guy like me walks in there, and next thing you know, you're in your wheelchair and you're in the physical therapy department being baptized. You come up out, you come back, and he from the next, next Sunday preaches, and what denomination are they a member of? What denomination did they become a member of? I'm not talking about what they did, you know, maybe 60 years ago. I'm just saying what happened then. Well, Acts 2 answers those who received the word were baptized in that Day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. And so from that we learned that the Lord added to the church daily those that were being saved. So this was a salvific issue or a process, I guess we should say, not issue. It's just an act that reflects a really supreme commitment. And I would say for someone who is older and has a disability, mobile, mobility, it's, it's even more difficult. It's not easy sometimes, but uh, I know where there's a great big pool and it has a runoff. We can just, we got this done. I know, I already got the plan. The Brody Creek, we got it, we got it worked out. <laughs> the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved, to which church? And I'm, I'm gonna ask, if I've used this quote, y'all have heard this quote from, from uh, this Baptist manual for years and years, but I just want you to use it this time for what it says about this, to which church was added. And the apostolic age, when there was one Lord, one faith, one baptism, no differing denominations existed. Okay? So I, I've always used that to say that's how we are. But in the reality of the community we live in, there's all kinds of denominations. So there better be some clarification on my part because, well, I'll get there in a minute. The baptism of the convert made him a member of the church. What denomination? Well, there were none. So it didn't make him a Baptist, didn't make him a Methodist, or Presbyterian, or any, anything else. Made him a member of the church. In that sense, baptism was the door of the church. And he said now it's different. We argue that. It's not changed at all. Christ purchased the church with his own blood. He loved the church and gave himself for it. Christ is the savior of the body. This is in Ephesians 5 when it's talking about what? It's talking about the relationship. Jesus died to establish her. That is, recognizing the church, this entity. And it is a relationship, not a meeting house. Please help us. Please help us, Lord, to understand it and to become more attuned. Yes, this is such, you know, when, you know, 15 months we were out. And we saw a lot of activity. But added to what church, to which body? Are there any saved outside the body of Christ? 
He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. And so we see that this grand, beautiful company of angels, this universal church that also has a local entity where I know the names of the people, so everybody can see. And I wonder if this is what happened. Does everybody see the mystery, the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages was not, was, has been hidden in God who created all things through Christ Jesus? So why? To the intent that now, now, the manifold wisdom of God. Now, the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. What? by the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. He brings us and adds us to the church and he accomplishes what he has purposed in us through that means and that mechanism. This morning we were glorying in the cross. Today we are now accomplishing something eternally purposed by God in the church. And it's not just a building it is so much more, this is a expedient. Nothing more, never will be, never can be. Are all churches of Christ? Is the sign out front required? Well, I do remember in that's about as good as I could remember of the first church I went to that didn't have a, a label. It was a, in the woods. Paint was like about like you see that. In fact, that may be it. It's out of Arkansas. And uh, wooden benches, hill. I can't remember. Country Hill Church. I can't remember the name. It was just a little place outside. And it was the church. And that's you know how we started, and I think that when you read through and we study through the book of Acts, we're just going to see exactly that. And then, depending on where they were and what was happening, is what they did. Some, you know, I think in Ephesus it appears, you know, that that might be the first place that they actually had a, a building, and Don can probably enlighten us a little bit on that as far as a, a structure that was there. But uh, they believed in Jesus, repented of sins, confessed Jesus as Lord, they were baptized for the forgiveness of sins, they walked by faith. That's, that's what the members of the church did. So, <clears throat> I find myself in this position last week, that's not, that's 14, 15 months ago, but just the same look. I mean, everything looked almost identical. Three people we're looking for. When they rolled in, knew had three, four, five, knew what church is this? What church is this? What's the answer? Because, no, excuse me. It, no, that's not the way it was. Is this a Lutheran church? That was the statement made rolling in. No. And I got to explain to them what I had been teaching right at the end of last year was that when we come in here, we get to see what it was like in the first century. Whatever you were before is now different, isn't it? Because you used to be a homeowner and a professional this and professional that, and now we're just not doing that. And now we're in this room together, and we're assembled, and it was to assemble for church. We are going to engage in the worship of God, and I have to teach from this book. And I told him, if I say anything that's not in the book, then you need to challenge me because I'm not telling you the truth, and you need to compare it. But when we look at what the church practiced in the first century, is this what our church is practicing? Are we members of the church? Is this how we became a member of the church? We can ask ourselves all of these questions, but when we enter into a room well, the multiplicity of people and the intent is to seek to worship God in spirit and in truth. Is it necessary that it gets labeled? And we know that when we travel overseas. 
And we know that when we don't have the abundance of funds to build or to do. And our identity as a church is established on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Ephesians 2 and verse 20. And that is that we would no longer be carried about by every wind of doctrine. And we must abide in the doctrine of Christ. He who does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit is acknowledging the oneness, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is through all. He is all in all. And when we say one Lord and one faith and one baptism, how can we be divided in any of those areas? And when we come into this place here, and let's answer this question then, because now I'm in a facility, and we are going to worship there at 2.30 every Sunday. I have an EIN number. We actually, when Billy and I were over at the other, at the, at the Moore building, occasionally there'd be a few bucks, and after about three years, we had enough to help Kenya put some windows in there building didn't we we did work that was the work we did we took a little bitty collection and we sent it to somebody else what's what name is expedient for this group today when I go there at 2 30 what do I need to tell them what do I need to call them what are we going to do today where do we start or do I just come in with everything I've already got Got to make the declaration. And we just call it what, let's, let's follow the early pattern because I know that there's a parallel between the ark of the church from Peter. And so the ark was built. And what was the name on the ark? Ark. I mean, I know that a lot of people, uh, you know, refer to it probably as other things and Noah as something else because they were pretty well riding him pretty hard about all of that but you know here's the deal when I arrive there we're just gathering all the people and say let's get in the ark and they say let's get in Christ Jesus and so the church 61 times thank you Don for letting me steal a handful of slides the church 61 times the church of God 8 times the church of God the churches of God 3 times the churches of Christ 1 time the church or church of Christ zero never mentioned you got the multiplicity in there but not names they're not names see this is how we have a real processing process problem the churches of the saints churches of the Gentiles churches of Galatia Churches of Asia. Maybe there's a church in Finland we can get started. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? And so where is the church? In the churches in China or the churches in Asia, the churches in Macedonia, churches in Judea, churches in Laodicea, the churches in Kenya. Y'all watching now. The, the church in Thessalonica, the church of God in Christ Jesus, the church of the firstborn. The church, the church, the church, the church, the church. Not names. What are they? Identities. If we can just change that one thing. When you roll in, and what church is this? It is the church that identifies with Jesus Christ and him only. And there is no hierarchy. Well, let's just keep going. i got more here. It's just one. There's just one. And... <clears throat> One body, one church. And the name? Well, we see how the Bible uses the term so that we do not dot denominationalize the name. Did, did you? We see how the Bible uses the terminology so we do not denominationalize the name. Now, there are some things that I can argue for expedience sake that there was a time that maybe that meant something then that it doesn't mean now, 40 years ago. But that still doesn't change anything about the principles we're now teaching. 
as one ark, one church, and there wasn't a name needed. And maybe this is how we should just, you know, approach it. Where do you go? Church. Where at? 10301 North Rodney Perrin Road. Can't miss it. Well, a lot of people have trouble finding it, but to get in front of the get in front of the theater, you'll find it. The sign on a building may indicate under a denominational group with a multiplicity of locations. These guys, I mean, they, they have, they got a great structure uh, in a business model. Uh, there is a guy over in North Little Rock, and I don't know whose model he followed, but now if you were trying to attract people, they got a rock and roll stage. It looked like a Branson show. It's awesome. I mean, the way they got it set up. And it's called That Church. What church? Oh, it's That Church. Oh, yeah, that's kind of a novel name. That.com. Yeah, well, I'm going to be the church. The.com church. I, you know, what I mean, what am I saying is the church is not the sign on the building. The church sign declares a group of Weight Watchers on this one. What it is is that the building becomes designated as a Weight Watchers facility. Okay? So the sign changed. And I think it changed meanings and did a disservice to the church when it plugs something in there that is beneath the work of the church. It's not the work of the church in that processing. To love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. To return the pillar in the church of Christ, which is the pillar and ground of truth. It is organized with saints and deacons and bishops, elders, scripturally. We seek to accomplish those things. We begin to come together and work toward those things. Practicing righteousness, rejecting man's designated titles. Now that is something that I want to address. Because had at someone's declaration into, and I'm talking about into the facility we're talking, that I was in this last week and today. When he said, is this a Lutheran church? And I said, no, it's a church of Christ. What would have happened in his mind? Huh? Anybody deny it? Denomination. Actually, there could be somebody in there that may be professing to be from the Church of Christ and make the same statement, but he didn't say universal. Church of Christ. And I'll show you something that that means in a minute. What I'm saying is you better be careful when you give the name because the designation doesn't resonate in the mind of the individual you're talking to as it does with you. That's the important thing that we have to understand. You have the meaning of it, but if you make the claim of it because of the labeling that we have engaged in, because of the culture that we live, it's unavoidable. So you got to begin, we, we have to begin to address it. That's our, that's our job, to carry the gospel to the world, make sure they understand. And, you know, the shift of change in, in our world, it's demanding that. And we still, it's, it's the same thing. We're going to learn not to think beyond that which is written. That was a solution then, it's a solution now. And we need to make sure that we're not doing the same thing, even with our designation. There's one body, he's put all things under his feet, giving to be head over all things, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all and in all. It is possible. And then see, there is a church be outside with the name outside, but it had lost its first love. He said, repent or I'll remove your lampstand. If you look in the book of Revelation at the end there of chapter 1, the lampstand was the church's identity. They were going to lose it. It was going to be removed. Well, the sign could be up front, but Christ said that if you don't return to your first love, you've lost it. Work, labor, patience, very evil, but they'd left their first love. 30 years later, they had to repent to get their identity back. They weren't the church of Christ. I mean, they had a name, they had a label, and it just takes a generation, or, you know, get one generation in, there's your, not universal, but united, churches of Christ, open and affirming. Church of Christ. Is that the church of Christ? It's the label on the door, on the window, on the building. 
The Lord rejects or removes those who refuse to cease or cease to obey that form of doctrine. Have we forgotten what manner of person we ought to be? And giving an answer to a man for the hope that is within us. And it's not the building or the place we hang. The church, Christ's church, stands united in her opposition to denominationalism. We can't remain a willing part and perpetuation of denominationalism. We just can't do that. And we have to become effective in communicating that because it's hard to get away. What church has the Lord added you to? Many friends of mine are members of a church of Christ denomination in their mind. And I don't know if I took them on a, a mission trip in Kenya, if they would be comfortable in understanding what was happening. But what we do learn very clearly is to ask the question, are you a member of Christ's church? And when we ask the question, what church has the Lord added you to? Don't you think that's the only church that you have to be a member of? When you obeyed the gospel, you became a member of the church that Christ placed you in. The obligation now is to find those who are seeking to do the same thing and to replicate the teaching. With the emerging Church of Christ denomination, the naming of the church is becoming more challenging. The designation of our sign, Church of Christ, doesn't define a denominational identity, but we live in a world that does so. And our relationship, it's, it's identifying our relationship in Christ in a location where we worship. And maybe we need to make sure that we're communicating that. The designation of our sign, Church of Christ, does not define denominational identity. Relationship in Christ. How? Religious culture sees it as another denominational label. We must respond according to the world's perception. We have to do so. Are you a member of the church of Christ? Are you a member of the church? Are you a member of Christ's church of the firstborn? You know, six years ago, 80, this many of us plus a couple more were across the street in Guillermo's Coffee breaking the law, I think because of the capacity. But the sign, the sign on the door was closed, coffee shop closed until 1130 due to worship. There was no name on the building but Guillermo's Coffee Shop. Is the name not a ship? It's not essential. If the people are doing the work, no. No. You take the sign off right there. If all the people are doing the work and the talk, it wouldn't matter. Oh, I, it helps, you know, travelers. I still remember Natalie. She came in that morning. <clears throat> We were getting started, you know, I was going to be in the little room in the back, if y'all remember, and had about 16 people, and then next thing you know, we come out of that and turn all the tables and turn all the chairs. And Natalie comes over and says, Poppy, you can say it's a church, but it's still a coffee shop. <laughs> and she had me, didn't she? She had me. And then I said, well... The church is not where we go, it's what we do. It's who we are. And it was a great teaching moment. You know, I hope that our young ones in that moment of transition understood that. Begin. I, we got pictures of you guys. It, it was neat. It was different. It was a challenge. It was weird. Strange. Unity. The Word of God. Jesus May we pray it too. Neither do I pray for these alone, but those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, and me, and I and you, that they all may be one in us. And 
that is your invitation today. Bring your sin to Jesus. Have them removed, and he will lift you up. Aaron, who's leading our closing song? Oh, Paul, there you go. This is an invitation for anyone who may desire to respond to that. I bring my sins to thee, the sins I cannot count, that all may cleansed be, in thy once open fount. I bring them, Savior, all to thee, the burden is too great for me. The burden is too great for me. I bring my grief to thee, the grief I cannot tell. No word shall need it be, thou knowest all so well. I bring the song. Suffering Savior, all to Thee. My life I bring to Thee. I would not be my own. Oh, Savior, let me be Thy. Attention, Brother Cliff will now lead us in our closing prayer. Our Father and our God, hallowed be thy great and matchless name. Again, we bow in thy presence with thankful hearts. So thankful that our lives have been spared this day. Whether the good measure of health that we enjoy, but the opportunity to assemble again in the name of Jesus. We understand and thank thee for every blessing of life. We realize that without thee, you would have nothing at all. Without thee, Father, we'd be nothing at all. We thank thee for the blessing we've uh, been brought to us this morning. We pray that we all each understand the meaning of whose church it is. And we're thankful, Father, for the church which was established by our Savior, which you purchased with your own precious blood. Thankful for the, the opportunity that we can be members of it. We pray that not only we, but all people everywhere might have the proper understanding of thy word, what they must do in order to be saved might uh, render obedience unto thy way. We pray that thou would be with us as we part and go our separate ways. Forgive us of our sins and according to thy will. Accept our thanks and continue to bless us as our prayer in the name of Jesus, thy Son and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen.